So I'm Eric Schumacher, and I'm from uh, the Defense and Veterans uh, Center for Integrated Pain Management at the Uniformed Services University. If Steve jumps up here and, and hooks me before I finish, just remember these pictures, because the pictures really depict uh, what we're faced with and, and how we got into this and what we've been working on. And if you start at 12 o'clock at the top, you'll see combat injury. The second picture over there really is not just for the, for the injured, it's for the medics who are carrying the injured, because the vast majority of, of uh, pain problems that we run into and in active duty soldiers, just like the rest of us in this room, are actually from non-combat related wounds, carrying heavy loads, sports injuries, um, uh, training injuries, jump injuries, things like that. Uh, the picture of the soldier with a helmet uh, is just a reminder of what you've heard from uh, others uh, going back to Bob Kern's talk and, and now David's, that this is a very complex co comorbid state, um, not just in veterans, I, I honestly think in soldiers and veterans, but I honestly think this depicts probably the problems in your populations as well. And then just to remind you that we take care of families, we take care of retirees. Uh, most people don't realize the military health system is a large integrated health system that uh, is cradle to grave. In fact, when I get out of the DOD sometime in the next few years, that will be the first time I've stepped out of this in over seven decades. And then finally, you would not have seen those pictures 10 years ago. A soldier doing uh, what we would call combat movement, now we call yoga. Uh, because they wouldn't have taken yoga 10 years ago, but now they realize that, that's, uh, that these, these are evidence-based practices. And of course, um, uh, the disclosures, I am uh, married to a yoga therapist and a mindfulness teacher. I don't know who speaks for the DOD, but it certainly is not me, and this is not uh, reflecting of my university either. It's my personal opinions. So a brief, brief overview of, the, of DOD medicine, especially for those of you who don't have any experience in this. We are a very large integrated healthcare promotion and health promotion and healthcare delivery system. We have about nine and a half million reliant uh, ben uh, beneficiaries or users. We're about the same size as the VA. In combination, the two, two large federal health systems represent close to 10% of the population of the U.S. We are as large as the largest healthcare delivery systems. And although we're separate in, in our funding, uh, increasingly, as, the, as, uh, uh, as you'll see me talk about here, we're part of a continuum of healthcare delivery, and we don't focus on that enough. We don't focus on what soldiers and sailors and airmen, Marine Coast Guardsmen learn in terms of resilience and self-reliance when they become veterans and, and vice versa. We are not as paired as we should be with the VA in trying to couple the way we do care and they do care, and we're doing better in that. We, f we fund and conduct requirements-based research. Most, much of our research is requirements-based. We do have innovator-directed uh, research or uh, investigator-driven uh, research, but we have to tie it to a requirement. We also direct the care through policy development and implementation, and these are our priorities. We need to have translational and implementation uh, science that's evidence-based and, and, and provides effective care. We are increasingly concerned about focusing on pain management and getting away from the focus solely upon, um, upon opioids. Uh, Trip Buckenmeyer, who's at the back of the room and will be talking tomorrow, Trip, if you raise your hand, is often, uh, often says, you know, few soldiers when they get their legs blown off in combat are screaming for acupuncture. We need morphine. We need opioids. We need effective, you know, ketamine delivery and things like that. And what we've done in the country, as is, is I'll show you in a few minutes, is we've redirected from what was initially a pain focus to one of almost uh, uh, a continuous hammering around opioid use. Uh, we want to be aligned with other federal med medicine par partners and enhance a whole of government approach. And nothing probably illustrates that better than this. At the top is going to be organizations, at the bottom is going to be products, and in the middle is a timeline. And this shows what's happened across the federal medical uh, sector here over the last uh, 10 years or so. so uh, we paired, with, uh, coupled with uh, the VA, uh, to uh, leverage their experience in pain around 2009, 2010, stood up a task force, issued a, a task force report, which then combined our efforts across the VA and the DOD. The next year, the Institute of Medicine, now the National Academy, issued its Institute of Medicine Pain in American report that validated a lot of what we had. We stood up a pain management working group. 
began to, to formulate uh, practice guidelines and develop a comprehensive plan in our services. Uh, we, we then began to contribute through to Dr. Buckenheimer and others to the uh, Interagency Pain Research Coordinating Council, which went on later, as you'll see, to uh, form the National Pain Strategy. At the same time, we've been a part of the NCCIH in the development of their of the, uh, the plans to leverage the, the platforms of the DOD and VA for comprehensive pain strategies. And now what's happened in the last few years is really a focus on, on opioids. This has gone from pain to opioids, and, and we're concerned that that's the wrong direction. We need to manage in an epidemic of epidemics, which is what we call it, we need to manage the victim of opioid use disorder, but we have to, we have to remember that as the CDC tells us, over 75% of that, of those patients start directly or indirectly because of problems with pain management. And with that, I'll end my comments. Thank you.